What is the most fucked up thing you've seen your parents do? When I was maybe 13, my cousin had a baby and my mom went over to my nana's house to wait for the baby with a butcher knife. She was going to stab my cousin's newborn because she thought it was the antichrist. I was about 9. There was a performance at the school. I was in the choir. My dad dropped me off and picked me up afterwards. When I was picked up, I found out I was in huge trouble. He absolutely unleashed on me, closed fist, kicked me, threw me against the wall, broke furniture. Grown man strength versus a 9 year old. Jeez. To this day I remember just curling up in a ball and him wailing on me. For weeks I had no idea what I had done. My offense, my shirt was untucked when he picked me up. To him it meant I was running around raising hell while unsupervised. Actually, it was the choir's costume, we were farm people singing tunes from Oklahoma. Once while my sister and I were upstairs, my parents were fighting really loud downstairs. Suddenly, we hear complete silence. My sis and I came out of our rooms at exactly the same time, to go see what was going on. We rushed down the stairs, and saw my father choking my mother. She stayed with him for approximate, 10 years after that. Oh, and the day after that happened, we all went on a happy vacation, with my mother pretending nothing had happened, and instructing us to do the same. Edit, thanks all for the replies with well wishes, shared stories and words of encouragement. It's been overwhelming. I'm sorry if I didn't answer your comment, at a certain point, I had to step away from it, I hope you all understand. I caught a lake turtle on my fishing line as a kid. We tried to get the hook out, but the unfortunate thing had swallowed it whole. My poor dad couldn't figure out what to do. We tried to kill it with a pellet gun, but it wasn't a powered, and didn't even break the skin. Eventually he sent me inside the house, and said he's take care of it. I was bawling, and couldn't pull myself away. Saw him pick up a cinder block and smash it to death with 3 to 4 blows, before kicking the remains into the lake. Horrible. I hated him for it at the time. But looking back on it now, as I'm now close to the age he was at the time, I really feel bad for him. I don't know that he had much else of a choice, and I'm sure it rattled him, just as much as it did me. My parents go in an argument, like I'm sure a lot of couples do. But it just kept escalating, voices raising, eventually it ended up in screaming match. My mom took the phone off the hook, and threw it at my dad. He caught it just before it hit his face, and then he got right in my mom's face, and screamed at her. She then started smacking him, and screaming at him. At the time I thought that was how couples argued. Then I saw my wife's parents get in an argument. She said it was one of the worst she had ever seen, and they were barely one tenth of the yelling my parents had gotten. Anyway, this has led to a lot of issues with my wife, she thinks I'm yelling at her when I'm, in my mind, barely raising my voice. She always thought I was crossing a line, while I thought I was holding back. Then about 6 months ago she saw my mom and I get in a fight. I'm not even sure what it was over, but I had to resort to yelling to get my point across, and catching random shit she threw at me. After that my wife understood that when I get stern and don't yell, and don't throw shit, I'm holding back. I'm trying the hardest to not end up like my mom. When I was a little kid, probably around 10, my mom told me to send her checkbooks in the mail that belonged to my grandmother. My mom didn't live with us, and she told me that my grandmother had asked me to send them since she was out of town, so I did. I later got sat down by my grandmother, and she was furious with me for sending the books. My mother had apparently done this in order to commit fraud, and had drained my grandmother's life savings from close to a million dollars down to nothing. I got blamed for it, until my grandmother passed away. One of her last conversations with me at age 24 was her still expressing her disappointment in me for sending the books. My mother denies the whole thing to this day. My mom aggressively forced a bear hugger a foster kid who'd been repeatedly raped by her father, while her mom held her down. So, my mom is a boundary stomper extraordinaire, and abused me all throughout my childhood. I eventually wound up in foster care myself, and haven't spoken to her in years. But remembering this, it was the most cruel thing I ever saw her do to anyone who wasn't me. My relatives had a foster daughter who, as I said above, had been raped by her dad, while her mom held her down. My mother knew this. 
My relatives made the mistake of inviting my mother over, and my mom said, Welcome to the family, Jim a hug, to the girl. Who said no? My relative said no. My mother kept saying, but why? Why not? Come on, it's just a hug. I tried to pull my mom aside, to explain why this was a bad idea, even though it should have been obvious, because neither I nor my relatives wanted to just blurt out, because she's traumatized by hugs and touches, after being raped so much, obviously, right in front of the girl. So then my mom just hurried over to the girl, and grabbed her in a big bear hug, and wouldn't let go, while the girl tried to push her off plus h-y-p-e-r-v-e-n-t-i-l-a-t-e-d. To my shame, and the shame of my relatives, we all just stood there for a moment, in stunned silence before running over, and removing my mother from the girl, who was now crying. The girl ran off to her bedroom, my relative slash the foster parents told my mom to get out, then my mom dragged me after the car, and yelled at me for a while. Finally when I could get a word in, I explained to my mother, why the hug was so wrong and hurtful. I explained that my mom should've taken context into account. My mom, the girl is fucked up in the head, if she can't even take a hug from somebody nice. And she's probably lying about her parents anyway. God, I'm still mad remembering it. I remember them having sex on the kitchen counter behind us, while we were having breakfast before school. One year they got a massive tub of chocolate as they were into eating foods off each other, but they hated it, so us kids had chocolate body spread sandwiches for nearly a year, it was a huge tub. When they got into fights it would turn into a throwing match. My mum dented the double glazed window with a frying pan, it is possible. And to this day, at least 15 years later, she still has the pan in question. They'd once redecorated the lounge, and about a week later were so drunk they got into an argument which resulted in my mum throwing her plate of salad at my stepdad, getting mayo and lettuce leaves on the wall, and I vaguely remember it still being stuck to the wall 6 months later. When my stepdad fell asleep on the sofa downstairs, she'd turn the bible channel on, or any other religious channel, put the tv on full blast, and take the remote to bed with her, so he couldn't change it. I have really low blood pressure, and high anxiety slash stress. This was also, when I was struggling with an eating disorder and hardly ate anything. I got into an argument with my mother about something incredibly stupid, probably about how I left a crumb on the counter, when I wiped it down or something, and started telling my mother I felt faint, and was struggling to stand. My mom screamed at me to leave her room, and get ready for school. I left her room and promptly fainted, hitting my head on the corner of a wall, and knocking myself out cold. When I woke up minutes later I couldn't move my legs or my arms, and began screaming for my mom to help me, sobbing loudly and begging for her to help. My mom opened the door, looked down at my crying, begging body unable to move on the floor, and said you're always so fucking dramatic. Before slamming the door in my face, I had a severe concussion. I'm going to bypass the dark shit, and relate one I find hilarious to this day. Most of my friends avoided coming to my front door my dad was scary shit. One of my good guy friends, however, was so mellow, and unfazed by literally anything, he would knock on the door as opposed to my window. He was around 6 feet 5 inches and goofy looking. So, he decided to dye his hair bright manic panic green, and his eyebrows. It was raining out. He knocked on our front door and my dad opened it. He stared, silently, for nearly a minute, taking in the full effect of my giant green buddy whose skin was now quite green too. My dad was really stoned, as opposed to the more typical less mellow things he usually went for. Finally, he just came, and got me and said underpants bandit, there's a jolly green giant here to see you, and left the room. The next day he asked if, in fact, my buddy was actually the jolly green giant, or if he was hallucinating. My mum cheated on my dad, when I was 5 yo. I remember seeing the guy, and mum saying don't tell dad. To save the marriage they moved states, and my dad still kept his same job, 150k salary in the 90s, and came home in the weekends. Of course mum found someone else to cheat with, while dad was at work. He got her all the new cars, and started her a business. But still she was committed to cheating. They divorced. During the custody court case she lied in court say my dad raped me and my sister. Same mum, different dad. My dad was trying to get custody of my sister even though she wasn't his own. He knew she was better off with him. 
the case destroyed my dad, lost his job, house money etc. Mum remarried and had more kids with the new guy. Fast forward 10 years. And she cheats on him with his best friend. Told my sisters don't tell dad, she broke the news on my birthday, which was the same day as my final exams. They go to court for custody, can you guess what happens next? She said my stepdad raped her, and my sisters. Utter bullshit. He can only visit with a police officer present. These are examples of what she has done to people in my life. I could write a book about the shit she has done to me personally. I think it was probably sitting in a chair with a wooden spoon, when I was about 5, screaming at me to come to her, so she could beat me with it. The kind of scream, where they turn red in the face, their expression is so distorted it barely looks human, their throat gets so tight from the level of screaming they sound different. I just remember standing there in front of her crying and frozen. When I didn't go to her she started hitting herself with the wooden spoon on her leg, screaming as she did it. When it snapped in half on her leg, she started hitting herself and pulling at her own hair. She had a wooden spoon shaped bruise perfectly shaped out on her leg and I remember a few days later when I saw it and said something she said that's because of you. That's what you did. I'm pretty sure it was because I didn't want her to brush my hair. I can't really remember. My brother never experienced any of this. I always copped it when I was home alone with her. But out of everything she ever said to me, and still does, that was the most fucked thing I've seen her do. My sister and I had a bed in my mother's room. She slept with her boyfriend on that bed. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night and saw them having sex. Another time, I had woken up and gone downstairs, asked her boyfriend, the same one from earlier, where my mother was. He lifted up his chin and there was a cut all the way across his neck. I later found out that my mom went to jail for 27 days. I've also seen my mom going after my current stepfather with a knife. Good thing we had a roommate. My mom held a gun to her head when I was 8, threatening suicide. When I ran over to her, crying, trying to stop her, she pointed the gun right at my forehead and told me to get away. Never been more scared in my life. She also shot a gun off in the house a few weeks later, had several ropes tied into nooses hanging in her closet, wrote several suicide notes, and would basically threaten to end her life whenever something inconvenienced her. Luckily she's sober and much more stable now, but we don't have a good relationship, and I'm still terrified of her to this day. Saw my dad kill a dog with a hose, because he was always fighting with the other dog. Saw him drown a cat in a 5 gallon bucket, not sure why, and saw him possibly beat a person to death. I was young, around 8, and he stopped at a bar, and fought a guy right out front with me sitting in the car. He got the guy on the ground, and just kept pounding his face, until he wasn't moving. Got back in the car with blood all over him, and his hands all messed up. We went to my grandparents house right after, then stayed at one of his friends house for about a week then moved far away from that state. He told me later in life that it was a random guy that just tried to jump him and he just defended himself. He also very seriously told me that I can never go back to that state. When I was around 7 to 8 years old I was in the car with my dad when a car coming the other way hit a fox. I still remember the way that thing looked lying on the road afterwards. It was breathing, but not well, and a large part of what I thought should have been inside the fox was now on the road. So my dad stops the car and tells me play snake on his new phone. Mobiles were a pretty new thing at the time, which I now realize was to distract me while he went to check on the animal. Even at that age I could tell there was no saving that thing, and I bloody sucked at snake. So I was looking out the window again pretty quick. In time to see him look at the dying animal and then step slowly onto its throat to stop its suffering. And then using an old blanket from the boot to carry it off the road. Now I'm not suggesting this would be as traumatic as some of the other posts on here. And my dad certainly wasn't an abusive man. But I don't talk to him a lot. And that image of him looking down at the thing is so thoroughly burned into my head to this day. Looking back I would have done the same. Still seemed pretty messed up at the time. Not my story but my husband's. At 6 years old he had a loving relationship with his dog Star. The stories he's told me about her really light up his eyes. He loved her so so much. But Star was getting old. And he could tell. 
there had been some talks of taking her to the vet to be euthanized but nothing ever came of it. One day he heard a scuffle in the shed and peeked his head around the corner of the door only to see his mother hanging his dog from a beam. This is always the story that kills the light in his eyes when he talks about her. I'm begin to rescuing and fostering dogs so this story really tears me up every damn time. My mom and dad have been divorced since I was one and despite the fact that I spent approximately an equal amount of time with each of them through my childhood, my mother's house was my legal residence so I went to school in the town she lived in. During my 8th grade year, I began living with my dad full time due to years of abuse and neglect by my mom. That following summer my mother moved without telling anyone, leaving me and my dad to either move to the town where my mom lived, which had a great school system and all my friends, or stay where we lived, in the most drug infested town in the county with a considerably worse school system. My dad and I had to find a place, and move in less than 2 months. My parents divorced, when I was 7. My father died, when I was in my early 20s. He left me $5 in his will, that was fine, I wanted nothing to do with him from the time I was 7. The courts revoked his visitation, when I was 13. I saw him 3 times from a distance between 13 and 18, and didn't speak to him. We never got in contact again. My mom wanted me to get a lawyer, contest his will, and turn over the money to her, because she felt she was due on account of her crappy marriage and lousy divorce settlement. Her sisters agreed, 